Whether you're a seasoned business owner or you're just starting out, the most important thing that you can do for the growth of your business is to put time into your product photos. And yeah, you could always buy Photoshop, but if you're just starting out, it may not be affordable yet. Or maybe you're like me and you have a complete mental breakdown every time you look at that confusing screen of tools and gadgets. Whatever your reason for avoiding Photoshop, there is hope. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I edit photos like this and this and even this with a totally free website. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And over the last 10 years, I've been able to dodge the use of Photoshop by using an amazing website called iPicky.com. I'm not an affiliate, nor is there even a paid version of the tool. When I say free, I mean F-R-E-E, -E, free. It's been a huge lifesaver, both for my various businesses, as well as for personal projects and family photography. In just a minute, I'll show you exactly how to use this awesome tool to grow your own business and marketing. But before we dive into the details, I just wanna take a moment to give a quick shout out to this week's featured shop. Thanks so much for your love and support. If you'd like to submit for your own shout out, tag Handmade Alphas in a photo or screenshot of yourself watching this video, either in your Instagram feed or Instagram story. Now, iPicky has a lot of different features and tools, so today I'm only going to be covering a few of the basic features that can help you to achieve photos like this, which are perfect for product thumbnails and listing photos. But if you'd like a more advanced tutorial that teaches you how to create images like these, please let me know in the comments, and if there's enough interest, I'll add it to my schedule. So let's head over to my desktop or we can start editing our first photo. The website that we're using today is iPicky.com. This isn't an app, nor will you be able to use it on mobile. I also don't recommend attempting to use it from a tablet unless that tablet also has a mouse or with a laptop that primarily uses a trackpad. This is because you're going to need full use of your mouse and screen scroll wheel in order to zoom, navigate, and precisely edit. All right, so from the iPicky homepage, we're going to click edit a photo right here. Normally, this is where you would have the option to upload your photo by clicking photo library. You can click add images right here in the left-hand corner, but I've already got some photos loaded up, so we're gonna play with the ones that I already have. Let's start with this picture of a bracelet. We're gonna double click it to open. And this photo I actually shot with my cell phone. Normally my go-to camera for product photography is my Nikon Coolpix L820. I do have a DSLR, but for close-up shots, I still prefer my Nikon Coolpix L820. Starting out, we have this little bracelet. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is crop this photo down just a little bit because it is very long, just because that is how my phone's default settings are. So I want my bracelet right in the middle. So I'm gonna click apply, okay? Now we are in the basic editor tab. You'll notice here on the left, there are a lot of different tabs that you can play through. I recommend going through all of them and having some fun with it. Take some pictures of your kids or your pets or even some selfies and have some fun playing with some of the menus because there's a lot to be discovered. But for the purpose of editing this piece of jewelry over a white background, what I want to do is within just the basic editor tab, I'm going to go into the exposure option right right here. Now that that is open, I can go through and play with the exposure and highlights plus the shadows and contrast of my image. For the exposure, I just want to turn it up enough to turn my white perfectly white. Now you will notice that if you crank this up too much, you start losing some of the color and you do start getting this really hazy look. Um, so I don't recommend cranking it up all the way. You wanna find a nice balance. So I usually do it a little less than what I would normally want the photo. So right here. I could totally brighten this up a little bit more, but I like to make it a little bit less. That way I can add things in in layers. So we've got it at 26 right now. I'm going to click apply. Then I'm gonna go back into the exposure tab again, and I'm going to increase the exposure even more for that second run. But this time I'm going to use this little manual brush. See this little paintbrush right here? I'm going to click on that. I'm going to reverse the effect 
And by reversing the effect, what that means is I'm going to be able to paint the effect on manually. You can change on your brush size right here or the hardness of the brush, which is gonna make it more crisp. You can also do the strength if you just wanna fade things out. And I'm going to go along and paint in. That way, as I get close to the bracelet, I can avoid the areas that we notice getting washed out a little bit too much. And sometimes you gotta play with the brush hardness and get things just perfect before they look the way that you want. Now, obviously, if I was editing this product for an Etsy listing, I would probably put a little bit more time into it than I am doing this right now. Uh, but I figure for example's sake, this would be a good place to start. I would also like to add that editing uh, bronze and golds is a lot easier than it is to edit silvers because you start to kind of lose the product when you edit silvers sometimes, especially over these nice uh, clean white backgrounds, you lose some of the details. I do like to try to leave a little bit of the shadow. I feel like it makes the product look like a three-dimensional object and not just like a vector graphic. So I will go along the edges and it already looks way better than it did previously. There we go. All right. Now, obviously we could keep doing this over and over. We could do multiple layers and get it like stark white if we wanted to. Um, but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here. I am gonna go back into this exposure tab and increase the contrast. What that's gonna do is give this a little bit of depth. I don't recommend cranking it up all the way because you do start to lose areas of your product when you do that. But by turning it up just a little bit, you add some cool definition. So I've got it on 17 right now. I'm going to click apply. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go into the sharpen tab. Now I see some people on Etsy who I can tell took the sharpness and the clarity and they cranked them all the way up and it makes your product almost look like comic book art. It, it just doesn't look real. Um, you definitely don't want to do that because it makes your product look like it is a, even a, a, a tangible item. Uh, so you can definitely sharpen up your images a little bit and increase your clarity a little bit. If your phone isn't great or your camera isn't great or it turned out a little bit blurry, but right about here, I think looks good. Next thing that I'm gonna do is go into the hue and saturation tab. Now, most of the time when you take a photo of your product, you're going to lose some of the natural color that you see with your human eye, right? Um, unfortunately, that's just a result of taking photos. Cameras don't tend to capture actual colors of a product. So you can go in and adjust the saturation and crank it up a little bit to make your product look a little more vibrant. My one suggestion though is to make sure that you do not turn it up so much that the product does not match the item in your hand. When you're doing this, I recommend having the product in your hand, literally in your hand as you edit your photo. That way you can hold it up to the screen and compare to make sure that your product actually matches what you're showing customers. So we'll go ahead and click apply. All right, and already this looks like a fantastic listing photo. It looks great. We can go ahead and pull up the before photo, so you can see, here's our before, here's our after. I think the after looks a lot better. So that was very, very quick, very, very painless, and it did not require Photoshop at all. Let's go ahead and do a couple more products. All right, next one I'm going to do is this little white pumpkin right here. And what I wanna do with this product is I wanna show you a cool tool that will help you to get rid of any blemishes or dots or uh, little dust particles that might float onto your products. This is great for your backdrops as well if you notice that there's like a little fleck of dust on your backdrop. So the first thing I'm going to do is head into that exposure tab on the left again. I'm gonna work to try to not wash out my little pumpkin too much because it is white. So we'll go ahead and stop about there. Then I want to crop my photo. Oop. That way I am not getting so much of this background here. For these particular photos, I actually used a white piece of uh, computer paper. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna go back into the exposure play with it just a little, increase 
ooh, increasing the contrast actually washed it out a little bit too much. Instead of contrast, I'm going to instead play with the sharpen tool to see if that will give me more of a result that I want. Let's try sharpening it. Yes, much better. Ah, yes, that is that is much better. Okay, so for the sake of this particular product, I, I would typically not use a white background or a stark white background for a white product, but I really wanted to show you this cool tool. And the best way to do that is to do a product that is white on a nice bright white background, okay? So you'll notice that there are a couple little dust particles on my white pumpkin. Um, this is very, very typical, especially when you're taking close up images, you can't get every single little speck of dust off of your product. It doesn't mean that your product is dirty, but it can be perceived that way by the customers. And obviously these are little things that can be blown away or wiped off very, very easily. But sometimes when you're taking photos, they just find their way onto your products. So I recommend going into this little tab right here. It looks like a little face. This is called the uh, the skin editor or the retouch editor. And what I recommend doing is going into the tool called blemish fixer. So blemish fixer is going to get rid of dark spots on your product and pimples if you want to get rid of pimples on your face. Uh, and shine remover is going to get rid of light spots on dark products. So very, very useful tool. I'm going to use the blemish fixer in this case, and I'm going to get rid of this dot right here. So you want to get the size where you want it right about here. And then I'm just going to dot it away, dot it away, dot it away. And then we scroll back and it's like it was never even there. It's such a handy tool if you don't wanna have to reshoot photos or try to cover up little dust particles, cat hairs, pieces of you know fiber and fabric that have tangled themselves in your product, you can easily go in and just remove those. That way you don't have to take photos over and over again. So super handy tool that you can use. And then you just wanna make sure that you click apply. Let's go see how that works on a dark product. All right, so now I have a dark pumpkin. I'm going to go back into my basic editor tab. I'm going to crop down this photo just like we did with the last one. Click apply. Now I'm going to go into exposure, lighten up our background just a little bit. Click apply. From here, I'm going to go into the sharpen tool. I'm going to increase my clarity. Okay. Maybe a little less. Click apply. And then I think I'm gonna go into my exposure and increase my shadows a little bit because this pumpkin is, is very, very dark. It is a black pumpkin, um, but I did take this photo outside so you can kind of see the reflection of a tree in it. So I'll go ahead and click apply. That looks pretty good. Now what I wanna do is get rid of these white little dust particles. This pumpkin was in my kitchen where it probably has some uh, plaster on it because we just had a new backsplash installed. So I'm going to click on this retouch tab again. And this time, instead of blemish fixer, I'm going to use shine remover for a dark product, right? And it is the exact same process. We find the spot we want to remove and we dot it away. Now it looks like you might still be able to see it, but when you zoom back, you can't even notice it. So let's go ahead and remove a couple more really quick. And this is why I said that having that mouse is so important because you can just quickly scroll with your scroll wheel and zoom in and out so fast, just like that. Now using iPicky does get easier over time. Keep in mind that I've been using iPicky.com for around 10 years now. So I'm very, very quick to edit my photos. However, the more that you use this tool, the better it becomes and the easier it becomes for you. So I do have a lot of people who say that it is a challenge at first, but just keep at it, keep having fun with it. Do some rec recreational editing. Don't just do editing for your business. Um, the best way to explore new tools and to try new things and to find out how the tools work is to just have some fun and do some personal projects with it as well. Ooh, looks like we've got one more there. And now our pumpkin looks a beautiful. Let's do a quick before and after. Grab our before photo. 
Oh, that looks so much better. So here's our before. Here is our after. That looks so, so much better than our original. I do wanna show you how to quickly uh, go in and save your images. You wanna click the save button and you wanna make sure that you are set on the highest setting. This is going to make sure that your photos are beautiful. You can also rename your file and this is going to save into your downloads on your computer. But that's how you use iPicky.com to edit your photos for your Etsy listings. Very, very quick and very painless. When running a product-based business, good product photography can be the difference between success and failure. Your photos are what make a product tangible in the eyes of your shopper. So always take time when both shooting and editing your images. And if you get a photo into iPicky and realize that the lighting is off or the image just didn't turn out as clear as you would have hoped, take my word for it. It is easier and faster to simply reshoot that photo than it is to attempt to edit a bad photo especially as we near the busy holiday season when expert photos are absolutely essential if you want to see more sales in your shop. And speaking of the holidays, I've had a ton of subscribers asking for tips for better social media marketing in order to game up for the shopping rush, which we expect to begin next month. To help you prepare, I created a free 30-day Instagram challenge kit for you, which includes a guided content calendar that you can fill out for your own business, marketing ideas for posts, stories, and reels, and a post planner to help you stay organized as you dive into the challenge. You can grab the 30-day Instagram challenge kit down below. Overall, Success on Etsy means paying close attention to detail and making sure that quality is apparent in all areas of your shop. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.